Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, today insha'Allah we'll continue our talk about a Jannah, paradise. And if you remember last week, we said, and insha'Allah when you're at the door of paradise, Allah will talk to us and He's going to say, I have prepared, He's going to say, I have four commitments for you. You will live and never die. You will stay young and never get old. You will be healthy and never get sick. And you will be in constant happiness and never be miserable. That's before we get in. Those are commitments that Allah is giving us. Continuous happiness, continuous health, youth, everything. That's before we get in. And when we get in, there is a hadith that we have to remember before talking about paradise. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in a hadith Qudsi, I have prepared for my righteous servants what no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and no human has ever thought of. So everything we're talking about last week, this week, and all of that, it's just a very small example. It's not really what's going to be in paradise. What's in paradise, it's much more than whatever we're talking about. And the reason it's much more than we can not talk about it is there is no words that have been created for that. If you look at a thousand years ago, the word television didn't exist. The word computer didn't exist. Internet didn't exist. When there is a need for the word, then people create that word. So whatever is in Jannah, we cannot understand because there is no word to explain it. I want you to imagine yourself, you are inside Jannah, inside paradise. And ask yourself, what is the first thing you're going to do? Ask yourself, you're inside, what are you going to do? Scream, run looking for your parents, looking for your children, run looking for the Prophet ﷺ. What is exactly you're going to do? Start to imagine that. Start to fill, make that fill your heart. Imagine paradise. Then it will fill your heart. Some of the pleasures that the Prophet ﷺ told us in Jannah, he said, every fruit that the believer will cut from a tree to eat, immediately another fruit will grow in its place. Immediately. You take a fruit, there is another one. No end. It's not you took half the crop, so there isn't that many left. You should, you know, be careful, otherwise you're going to run out. No. Whatever you take in its place, anything you take, it's replaced right away. And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, كلما رزقوا منها من ثمرة رزقا قالوا هذا الذي رزقنا من قبل وأوتوا به متشابها Every time that we be provided with a fruit therefrom they will say this is what we were provided with before and they will be given things in resemblance What it means is Allah knows anything we're not familiar with we're going to stay away from if you go to an oriental market and you see fruits, some of them they have odd shape. You will never buy one of them. Even though if somebody cuts it and gives you a taste of it, you say, oh my God, this is delicious. But by yourself, you're not going to get close to something that you're not familiar with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows our nature. So He makes the fruit, they look like what we've seen. It looks like an apple, it looks like an orange, it looks like this. But when you taste it, it's completely different. And every time you taste it, it's a new taste. So you tasted the, 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 the apple today, tomorrow it's a different taste. The day after it's a different taste. A million years from now it's a different taste. Every time it's a new taste. And then Allah says in the Quran, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابٍ 
and angels shall enter on them from every gate. When you arrive to your palace, you're the king. Remember, you're the king now. You arrive to your palace. Angels will be coming to welcome you. Not one angel or two. Angels will be coming to welcome you. Everybody's going to be coming to welcome you. They will come and talk to you and visit you. And then in addition, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sending you gifts with angels. On a regular basis, Allah sending you gifts. Allah, there is nothing you can give Allah, but Allah is sending you gifts. And He gives you so much, but He's sending you gifts. Coming to you, just look at the feeling. Somebody knocking, you open the door, this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How beautiful it is. When we want to talk about Jannah, the Prophet والسلام, made it easy a little bit for us. So he said, I'll describe to you the lowest person in Jannah. The lowest, the bottom line. There is nobody lower than him in Jannah. So the Prophet tells us, the lowest person in Jannah is the last person that will come out of hellfire. Which makes sense. Obviously, he had so many sins that he's the last one to come out. So he's telling us he's coming out crawling on his hands, on his knees, on his feet. Every time he tries to get out, the flames ca capture him and bring him back. Every time he tries to get out, he's caught and come back. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala release him. So he comes out and he's out. He looks back and say, Alhamdulillah, that he saved me from you. He's so happy, he's just been saved from fire. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, go and enter paradise, go enter Jannah. See, he goes to Jannah and he looks and it looks full for him. Full, no place. So he goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, it is full. There is no place for me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, would you be happy if I give you the kingdom of the richest king that lived on earth? The kingdom of the richest king that lived on earth. So the servant will say, are you mocking me Allah? Are you making fun of me? Because I'm the last one, I'm the most horrible of, the, of them. So Allah laughs and say, I'm going to give you the kingdom of the richest king on earth and like it and like it and like it and like it five times so you say I'm happy my lord I'm happy my lord you say I'll give you the kingdom of the richest king and time ten times more and you're gonna have whatever pleases you and whatever you wish go enter the paradise this is the lowest person in Jannah the lowest he has all of that, the lowest. Inshallah, you guys are in the masjid here, so you're not. Inshallah, you're in higher status. Inshallah, you'll have much more than that. And another hadith, the Prophet, to make it again, explain to us the lowest person in Jannah. He said, the lowest person in Jannah will walk in his kingdom a thousand years and never reach its end. Look how big is your kingdom. How big? I don't know how many years. Is it 2,000? Is it a million years? But you never reach its end. It's big. No end to it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created for us servants for the Jannah. Specifically created servant for the Jannah. And Allah says in the Quran, وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وُلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ إِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ حَسِبْتَهُمْ لُؤْلُؤًا مَنْثُورًا And around them servants of perpetual freshness will serve. If you see them, you will think they are scattered pearls. Those are creations that Allah made to serve the people in Jannah. To serve you, inshaAllah, in Jannah. And the reason He used the analogy of like scattered pearls, if you take... A necklace of pearl and just cut the string look at how everything is running everywhere he's trying to tell us they are going to be running everywhere to take care of your happiness of your needs whatever you want whatever you wish 
That's their job. And the Prophet والسلام, told us the least status person in Jannah will have 80,000 servants. 80,000 servants to serve you, the king of the Jannah, to serve you. Each one will have a plate in their hand of gold and another plate of silver just to serve you, whatever you want, whatever your wishes. If you wish anything, the minute you wish it, it's in front of you. It's not just, wait, we're going to go and you know, buy it from the market. No, it's in front of you. Anything you wish. And the Muslim, the, the, uh, the person of Jannah, is not going to have one palace. You're going to have many palaces. It's not just one that you have a huge palace and you live in. You have many. Maybe you have one on a river. You have one in the mountain. You have one in a valley. You have many palaces. And the hadith tells us that in each palace, there is 70 tables. And on each table, there is 70 different food. So just in one palace, you have 4,900 different food, each one tasting different from the other. And one person asked the Prophet والسلام, I like horses. Am I going to be allowed to have horses in Jannah? He, likes, he has a pet horse. He, he loves it. Is he going to be allowed to have a, a horse? And the Prophet said, Yes, you will have a horse made of rubies. What it means is the horse you're going to have there, you're going to have all the enjoyment of the pet that you want, but none of the responsibility and the unpleasant thing. You don't have to clean after him. You don't have to brush it, clean it, whatever, nothing. So all whatever, if you love a cat, you're going to have it if you want in Jannah. Anything you want, anything you wish is going to be there for you. I want you to ask yourself another question. Who's going to be the first people you are going to invite to your palace? Who are you going to invite? Are you going to invite your friends? Your parents? Are you going to invite the Prophet Ali wasalam? Are you going to invite Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar? Who you want to invite? Ask yourself. Because that's a reality. Insha'Allah, when you're in Jannah, that's a reality. And another thing the Prophet tells us about the people of Jannah, he says, there will be no disagreement among them. Their hearts will be like one heart. When you listen to this hadith, it made me reflect. One of the problem in life here, if you want to do something and you have friends, a lot of time they don't want to do the same thing. I would like to go fishing, they would like to walk on the beach. They would like to take a trail and uh, you know, go on the hills. But in Jannah, all the Muslims, their heart will be the same. You want to have something, your other friends will be happy to do it. So no disagreement. No, I'm going to go this way, you go this way. All of us, and all of us will be happy to do it. None of us will be unhappy. Are we going to be bored in Jannah? Think about it. Are we going to be bored? If you look at this life, it's very common that you have some of the famous people, stars, rich people, whatever, they get bored. And that's why many of them are addicted to either drugs, alcohol, because you like shopping, okay, you've done shopping one day, two days, three days, five days, a thousand days, you're tired of it. You like traveling, you've done it, you traveled all over the world, now you're tired, so you're bored. So you start to get into drugs and, and alcohol and stuff that, like that. But in Jannah, it's different. Because Allah is creating for us every day a million of new things for us to enjoy. Every day. Things that we don't think about. So there is nothing. Never we're going to be bored. And Allah is saying in the Quran, إِنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ الْيَوْمَ فِي شُغْلٍ فَاكِهُونَ Verily, the companions of the paradise... That day will be busy with joyful things. So we're going to be busy, but busy being happy. Busy enjoying. Busy loving the things that Allah is giving us. So there is no boredom. 
Never. Not a minute that we're going to be bored. All the time, we're going to be busy being happy. One of the nice things in paradise, a cloud will pass over the people, the Muslims, over the people of paradise, will pass above them. And the cloud will say to them, O oh, people of paradise, what would you want me to rain down on you today? Just imagine. Whatever you want. What do you want? Chocolate? You want orange juice? Apple? Whatever? You're the king. Whatever you wish, Allah is going to give you. And whatever rains on you is going to be different than what rains on the, the guy next door and the other person, the other person. Everyone, whatever you wish, the cloud will rain on you. And if you desire, let's say you're in paradise, inshallah, and you desire to see somebody, you would like to see one of your friends. The minute you desire that, the throne you're sitting on, reclining on, will move and take you to that person. Just like that. You'll be sitting in front of each other, talking to each other. Until you had enough, then you go back. You don't walk and all of that, you don't have to take any transportation, no. You're thrown, you're sitting on it, just having the wish in your heart. You're there. And that's why Allah said in the Quran, Ala Sururin Mutaqabilin, facing each other on thrones. That's the people of Jannah. That's you, inshaAllah. And on the other side, let's say there was a person that used to make fun of you. When you say, I'm going to masjid, he laughs at you. When you say, I'm going to fast Ramadan. You say, you're one of those old-fashioned people. You're still fasting? Come on, this is 1400 years ago. You say, I don't drink alcohol. Oh, you don't hear the end of it. How come? This is the 21st century. Are you crazy? You don't know what you're missing. If you ask about one of those, Allah will make you see him. And Allah says, قَالَ هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُطَّلِعُونَ فَاتَّلَعَ فَرَآهُ فِي سُوءَ الْجَحِيمِ he said, will you look down? So he looked down and saw him in the midst of hell. So now he's going to let you see him. He's going to be in the middle of hell and you're going to see that person that used to make fun of you. And you're going to have a dialogue with him. And you're going to say, Alhamdulillah that I didn't listen to you. You would have destroyed me if I listened to you. So don't listen to anybody who makes fun of you because you're doing what Allah ordered you. Don't care. You're going to be looking at him and laughing. And you're happy and are miserable. Another thing that's very nice in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Jannah there is a market. That all the inhabitants of Jannah will go to. The men will go together, the women will go together. And when you go to the market, there will be a wind that will blow. And the wind will get spray on you perfume that will cover your face, your clothes, your whole thing. You'll be covered with perfume. When you go home, the wife and the husband, each one go home and they meet. The, the husband will look at his wife and he say, Wallah, you are much more beautiful than before. And she will look at him and says, and says, Wallah, you are much more beautiful than before. So every week, their beauty increases. Just imagine how your husband is going to look a thousand weeks from now, from that time. How is your wife is going to look after a million years. Allah is just making our life constantly better, constantly more enjoyable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادًا For those who have done good is the best and more. Allah is promising us, for all of us who did good, they are going to get al-husna, the best. What is the best is paradise. So what is more? We're in paradise. What is more? More, the Prophet tells us, there is something called the day of increase, Yawm al-Ziyadah. After everybody settled down in their palace, in their places, everybody settled down. Then Allah is going to call all the people of Jannah. He's going to say, 
O people of Jannah, do you wish me to give you anything more? And the people of Jannah are going to say, Have you not made our faces bright? Have you not brought us into Jannah and delivered us from the hell? And Allah will say, I have one more thing for you. And Allah will, reveal, will, will remove the veil that's covering him. And people of Jannah will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is nothing more happiness that they will feel than looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the highest happiness you're going to have. And the people of Jannah, according to their ranks, the people who are in the high ranks will see Allah twice a day. If you're a lower rank, then maybe it's once a week, maybe it's once a month, maybe once a year. But it depends on your rank, how often you're going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not just that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have a private talk with every one of you. Every one of you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will talk to you individually in Jannah and say, I am pleased with you. Are you pleased with me? Do you believe that? Allah Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you, are you pleased with me, with Allah? This is, this is so generous. He's asking you, are you pleased with me? And then he's going to tell you, wish my servant, wish whatever you desire. So you say, Allah would like this, I would like this, I would like that. And Allah will tell you, you forgot about this. Would you like this? And you say, oh yeah, I want this too. And you forgot about that. Would you like this? Yeah, I want this too. And this and that. Allah is reminding you. And then he's going to say, all of that you're going to have. And everything that you desire and more than you can ever think of. Inshallah, next week is going to be the last part of the talk about Jannah, inshallah. And I'm hoping that you're starting to feel the love of Jannah inside your heart. This is the month of Ramadan. And our goal, all of us in Ramadan, is to inshallah enter Jannah. So make sure that the love of Jannah start to fill your heart. To guide you in whatever you do in your life. Whatever you do, remember Jannah. So inshallah, you do the right thing and avoid the bad things. أقول قول لهذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين استغفروه إنه غفور رحيم